Hello, you are watching the fourth part of tutorial about making 2D top down games in Unreal Engine 5. And uh, today we will add the first item to the game. We will add the apple. We will talk about actors and uh, we will also learn how to find out the object under the mouse pointer. After this episode, we will have an apple in a game and we will be able to detect the mouse pointer moving to the apple. So at first we will create new folder called items and uh, inside that folder we will create another folder called sprites. Into this folder we will later add all the images of items and I will send the link to the place from which you can download them. So let's click the import and choose the transparent icons and drop shadow and uh, import it to our project. Uh, again right click on that, choose the sprite actions and uh, apply paper to retexture. And again right click but this time we will choose the extract sprites. The extract sprites allows us to extract the uh, images from this one big image and uh, usually you have to know the grid size. It means how big are those small images. So in our case it's 32 by 32 pixels so we have to uh, configure the grid like that. Set the sprite extract method to grid and also change the cell width and cell height to, 20, to 32 pixels. And if you zoom in, you can see that the items are perfectly aligned in the grid. So click the extract and it will extract the sprites. Now you can see that in the sprites folder, you have all the sprites separated. We want to add the apple item to the game. So let's go to the items and create new folder there called apple. And into this folder we want to copy the apple sprite it's just for us to organize things a little bit more so i already know that the apple sprite has the number 224 so i can search for it and uh, move the apple into the apple folder now we will create flipbook from this uh, apple sprite and uh, you may ask like why we are creating the flipbook from the single sprite because it's not an animation the answer is that uh, in the future we want to have single blueprint for all those uh, items and uh, you know some of the items might be animated some of them might not be animated so uh, we will just treat everything as, as, as an animation and uh, that will save our coding later so let's create the flipbook and let's uh, call it the fb underscore apple now when we have the flipbook ready, we can add the interface which will be used by all our items. Uh, the interface is basically the uh, list of functions uh, which are shared between multiple classes, multiple blueprints, multiple objects. So we can have different implementation in each blueprint, but we can still call them using the single function no matter which blueprint implemented that. We will go back to the items folder, right click there and uh, type the interface into the search bar and uh, add new blueprint interface. We can call it i underscore interact because it will be interface for all our interactive objects. Now open the interface and start adding functions there. So you can see there is already like one new function there. We will remove it because it's not uh, needed and we will add our first function there. The first one will be the pointed at function and we will call it later every time the mouse pointer points to the object. The second one will be not pointed at and we will call it later every time the mouse pointer leaves the object. And the last one will be the interact function which will be used when the player wants to interact with the object. Now we will add the actor blueprint. So actor is an object which can be placed into the world, which uh, fits to our apple because we can place an apple into the world. So right click on the items folder and choose the blueprint class and then choose the actor. And you can name the actor as a BPA base item because it will be the base class for all our items. Let's open the base item and let's uh, add more things here. So each item in the world has to have uh, the collision capsule because uh, we want the character to uh, collide with this uh, item and uh, do not step on it. So let's add the capsule collision at first. The capsule should also be the root component of our item. So let's drag and drop it to the default scene root. And you can see it replaces the default scene root. Now let's add the paper flipbook. So we have some place where to actually show the Apple flipbook. 
And on the right side, choose the source flipbook to our FB Apple. We also have to rotate the Apple again so the camera faces it from top and not from the side. So let's rotate it. We also need to uh, make the capsule smaller. So the collision actually is not that far away from the Apple. So let's select the capsule and uh, decrease the capsule radius. So it fits to our Apple and we can also move the Apple a little bit. So it is inside the capsule. You can disable the snap to grid feature in case you want to make it precise. Now we can drag and drop the BPA base item and uh, drag it into the world. Uh, put it close to the character so we can actually see it and hit play and you can see the apple is there. And there are two issues, the collision doesn't work and also the apple is rotated wrong. So to fix the rotation, open the BPA base item, choose the rotation tool and uh, rotate the apple 90 degrees to the right and uh, you can also like uh, move the apple so it's again in the collision capsule. Now if you try to run the game again you will see that the rotation is fixed. To fix the collision open the base item, click the capsule and in the collision section find the collision presets and set it to block all. And again if you try to run the game now you will see that also the collision works as expected. Now it's time to implement our pointed at and uh, not pointed at functions. So in the top-down folder open the blueprints and uh, the BP top-down controller. Uh, this is a blueprint which is responsible for controlling our character. You can see there is already some code there to actually move our character around when we click on the map, but we can skip this code for now. What we want to do is to check uh, what's under the mouse pointer and uh, if it's our object we want to call the pointed at function and uh, if we leave this object, we want to call the not pointed at function. So we will start by adding the event on tick so we can check the mouse pointer location at every frame. Then we will add the get hit result under cursor for objects action. This action checks uh, what's under the cursor and uh, return it. It has one input value called object types and it's an array of the collision object types uh, we want to return by this action. So let's add the make array action and uh, connect it to the object types and keep the default world static value. Please note that by mistake I changed it to world dynamic here. So what you see is wrong, we really keep the world static value. Now we will focus on the hit result output of the uh, action and we will call the split struct pin to see what's actually inside. And you can see there is a lot of things, but what we care about is the hit result hit actor. This is actually like a, what's uh, under the mouse pointer. To test it, we will just print it. So add the print string action connect it to the event on tick so we can uh, print this on every tick and uh, connect it to the hit result. If you run the game now you will see that when you move the mouse pointer it prints the name of the object under the mouse pointer. But we only care about objects which implement our interact interface and not about all the objects so let's change the code a little bit more. We will add the does object implement interface action to check uh, whether the object under the cursor actually implements our interface. So let's add the hit actor to the test object input and uh, for the interface choose our I interact interface. Now we have to add the branch action to actually call the print string only if the object implements the interface. So let's uh, add the branch between the uh, print string and event tick and uh, as a condition add the return value of the does object implement interface action. If you run the game now, you will see that it will not print anything and uh, that's because we did not add the interface to our base item object. So let's go to the base item and uh, in the class settings, uh, find the implemented interfaces and uh, add the interact interface. If you run the game now, you can see that it only prints the name of the object which really implements our interface. 
but uh, it prints it in a loop as long as we have the mouse pointer above the object, which is not what we want. We just want a single message. To do that, we will store the object under the mouse pointer in the variable and uh, print the messages only if the variable changes. We will also change the code so the printing happens in the base item and not in the top-down controller where it does not belong. So at first remove the print string action. Now we can drag the hit actor and uh, add the promote variable action so it is stored in the variable and we will name the variable pointing at. Don't forget to actually call this promote variable action by connecting the white line. Now we want to call the pointed at function using our interface to actually later print the string uh, there in the base item. So let's take our pointing at variable and call its uh, pointed at function using the interface. Now we have to define what this function actually does. And uh, you know, using our interface, we are calling the base item uh, pointed at function. So let's go back to the base item and open the event graph. On the left side, you can see the interfaces section with list of all the interface functions. So let's double click on pointed at, and this will add the pointed at event into the event graph. As an example, we will just print the pointing at apple uh, string there. And since we are here, we will also do the same for not pointed at event. So let's uh, add the not pointed at event there add the print string action and uh, write not pointing at apple string there. If you run the code now, you will find out that it works almost the same as uh, previously. The difference is that uh, previously we just print this string in the top down controller, but now we are printing them in the base item. And uh, from the top down controller, we just call the base item function using the interface. Now it's time to only call the pointed at function once when the player moves the pointer above the apple. We will start by adding the not equal operator. And as a first uh, input, we will use the hit actor. And as a second input, we will use our uh, pointing at variable value. So we can check whether the pointing at object is the same as the one under the cursor. Then we need to add the branch. So we can actually call the pointed at uh, action if the object is not the same, it means when our condition is true. So don't forget to also connect the white lines and uh, connect the uh, condition of our operator, not actual operator, to the condition of the branch. And if we run the game right now, you can see that it only prints pointing at Apple once. Now we also want to call the not pointed at function. To do that, we will just use the false part of the branch where we check whether the uh, object implements the interface and uh, we will call the not pointed at function there. Don't forget to set the target input to our uh, pointed pointing at uh, variable value. We also want to set the pointing at variable to null, which means that uh, we are not pointing to anything. So use the set pointing at action and uh, do not set the pointing at uh, input value to anything, so we just uh, reset the variable. If you run the game now, you can see that both uh, functions of our interface works properly and the print strings are there. The last thing we should do is uh, cleaning up the code a little bit, so let's get to it. We will open the top down controller and select all the actions to get the hit result under cursor and check whether it implements the interface. Then right click on it and choose the collapse to function to create new function with these actions and let's uh, name it get object under cursor. This way you can make your code cleaner. Now open the function by double clicking it and shuffle things around to make it look nicer. Now click the return node and uh, change the uh, names of the return values. So the first one is the output value of our does object implement interface action. So let's call it object exists because that's what it actually means. And the second one is the hit result. So it's actually the object under the cursor. So let's call it the object. Now we can go back to the event graph and see how it looks like here. 
So we can again move things around to make the code more compact and uh, the lines uh, look nicer and better. And after that, we can select everything and uh, add new comment to describe what the code actually does. So once we look at it, we know what's going on there. And after any change, we should check the code still works. And uh, now we see it actually doesn't work. So let's go back to the top down controller and uh, check what's wrong there. And we can see that the get object under cursor function we have created uh, is actually not called. The white lines are not connected there. So we have to uh, create space between event tick and branch and move the get object under cursor there and actually call it. And this should fix the game. You can also make the comment section bigger so it fits the new code. And if you run the game again, you can see that the strings are printed again and the code works as expected. So that's all for this episode and in the next one we will add more apples into the game and we will learn how to interact with the apple and make it disappear when we click on it. So thanks for watching, please subscribe and see you next time.